Welcome yeah. to Integrate Yourself, everybody. I'm your host, Allison Polo, and you can find me at pureenergypdx.com and finally thrivingbook.com. Today, I am here with two very special guests and good friends of mine, two new friends I've met um, recently, um, Elise and Dan. And I am so sorry, guys. I don't know your last name, actually. What is your last name? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My last name is Paul Mary. Paul Mary. Okay. And you and you, and you have a different name, uh, Dan. What is it? Yes. Yeah. Dan Elwood. Elwood. Yeah, okay. You think we'd be Dan. married after eight years, but we're not. <laughs> well, you guys sure seem like you have the energy of a couple that is mm -hmm. is exactly you know, yes. has been together for a long time. Um, and yeah, I'd love to actually when love to talk about relationships today too, because I think that everybody needs a little bit more of that these days for yeah. sure. But <laughs> Elise is a certified nutrition coach and Dan is a personal trainer and certified holistic lifestyle coach. They have dedicated their lives to study exploration practice and the application of all things wellness. Uh, their health journey began on a traditional path of exercise as a means to sports performance and better aesthetics. Over the years, however, through research and more importantly, trial and error, they've come to realize the ways in which all things are connected. And that, that brings in the holistic aspect. And um, they've learned to, so since then, they've learned to create and, and, and integrate uh, a holistic philosophy into a lifestyle that supports continued physical, mental, and spiritual growth and well-being. And they share that with all of the people they work with as well. Welcome, Elise and Dan, to my show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us, Alice, and we are very excited. Yes. And so I want to give a little backstory on you guys because we had, um, you know, just this kind of a happenstance meeting. I was, uh, I had been in touch with you two and, um, and you guys had gotten my book and you were really excited yeah. about talking about it. And I actually, let's see, wait, no, it was, I haven't given you my book yet, but, uh, I think I had sent you the PDF is what yes, happened. Yes. Okay. That's what happened. And so you guys had been reading it already. And so you're really excited about it. And what we, um, I was passing through LA on my way back to Portland. And I said, Hey, you know, I was going to mail you guys this book, but why don't we just meet for coffee and I can just give it to you in person. And yes. so we did that and we ended up really hitting it off and you guys were amazing. And I was, it was such a great, uh, connection. So um, ever since then, I got to be on your show and then now you yeah. guys are on my show. So I feel like this has been just such a magical connection and I'm so honored and, and, and so excited that I got to meet you guys and, and connect with you. So thanks for yeah. being here. Oh my gosh. Thank you too. Yeah. We feel the same way. And it's, it's so funny, you know, we've always, Jen and I have always talked about like finding our tribe or our community and with the growing technological advances in social media, it's kind of taken on a different role of having this community on social media and being able to do these types of talks, whether it be on podcasts or just, you know, via FaceTime and calls. And it's just wonderful to have someone that shares the same holistic views where we're learning from you and you're learning from us. And it's kind of a two-way street. It's, it's such a, it's such a wonderful connection, right? The, nothing happens by coincidence. So I know the universe so brought true. us together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. hundred percent agree. Yeah. It's, um, it is wonderful to be able to connect with so many more people that are in the holistic realm uh, through social media, through podcasting. Um, and you guys are podcasters and have a wonderful podcast called the deep life podcast, which I love so much. And it's making a lot of traction. It's doing really well. So congratulations on that. Um, and and yeah. I do, yeah, I've, I've just been really, uh, especially during the time of the pandemic where all of our businesses changed, right? I mean, big time. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know you guys went through a huge transition. I don't know if you want to share about what, what happened with you, but um, yeah, I feel like most trainers, most people in the holistic realm had to really change a lot about what they were doing. And, and it's, Sounds like it's for the better for you guys. You guys are doing very well, right? Yeah, yeah. It was as tragic as the pandemic or COVID hit, you know, and that's a story in itself. I think it really 
catapulted us to go deep within our business because we had started Momentum Strength and Wellness. That's the name of our company. Just about maybe, I think we're just about three years in now. But I had also at that time, three years ago, I was in real estate. So I had my real estate license. I still technically have it. I don't practice anymore, but I was really full on real estate. I wasn't a nutrition coach when we first began the company. I just wanted to kind of help out Dan because I saw that there was so much administrative work that needed to be done with the company through Instagram. So I said, you know, you handle the in-person clients and whatever I can do to just facilitate the administrative stuff. I did it, but I didn't love real estate. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to people and, you know, seeing all the, I mean, the houses here in Los Angeles are insane. If you can only imagine. Oh yeah. (laughs) So great to like be in the Hollywood Hills and see, I mean, I would see celebrities coming into our, (laughs) you know, open houses, but I can talk health, fitness, well-being, spirituality, holistic health all day, every day. But like to talk about real estate and houses, it just didn't fuel my soul. So when the pandemic hit and I basically, we couldn't show houses or do anything. I was like, this is it, Dan, like, let's capitalize on this. I'm going to get my nutrition certification so that we can coach people in the aspect of, you know, food. And I'm able to provide more in-depth guidance with meal plans and really educating people about how food is medicine, food is information and can be very beneficial. And that's where it just kind of, yeah took off. And at that same point, we had talked a lot about wanting to start our own podcast for so long. And I remember we were with friends one evening in our, you know, little apartment here and we were talking, we were having a really in-depth conversation about spirituality. And my girlfriend was like, you guys should have a podcast. And we were like, we know like it's it's on our to-do list. Like it's on our like three to five year plan. And as soon as COVID hit and I kind of relinquished the real estate aspect within two months we had a gentleman direct message us on instagram saying hey you guys look like you know what you're doing but you might need a little help like have you ever thought of having a business coach and maybe starting your own podcast oh yeah and it was like wow like it's exactly like the universe was giving me the opportunity to step away from my real estate career and then another door opened yeah and it been yeah. magical yeah it was as soon as you admitted or decided that you were going to make that jump things started happening so up till then like i was doing all, all in-person training oh right uh, training and then sort of like everybody else all of a sudden the gyms were closed and there's nowhere to go and it was like what are we going to do how are we going to like start transitioning this to online coaching and then that was around the same time at least at least got way more heavily involved and got, you know got certified as a nutritionist and we started kind of shifting toward coaching people online and doing it together so that we nice. have the sort of the, the training element and then the, the nutrition element and then, you know, working together on a lot of mindset stuff. And, yeah. And oh. it's, it's certainly evolved because yeah. when we first began training, I was like very timid. It, a lot was triggering me, to be honest. I, I definitely <laughs> needed to work through some <laughs> shadow work on myself. And I knew that we were calling upon clients that were really my teachers because I want to help and educate um, people to the best of my ability and to Dan's ability. And what we began realizing is that everything's interconnected, right? Like you yes. can't separate physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. We had encompassed it ourselves, but we were still compartmentalizing it with our clients because we didn't want to come off as woo-woo or spiritual, which it can tend to be in the holistic community when people aren't understanding what holistic health really is. Right. So we almost were doing our clients a disservice a couple of years ago. I don't know, that probably sounds bad on our part, but it was just an evolution of coaching. Yeah. We very much were able to integrate spirituality and mindset and really uncovering the deeper meaning of why people wanted to achieve health and well-being in their life. And it was really digging through questions. Why do you want to lose this weight? Or why don't you want to exercise a certain way? And we just Mm -hmm. were digging deeper into, you know, their lives. And they were uncovering a lot of things to us that helped us connect the dots. 
through their traumas and their resistance or their almost being afraid to become the best version of themselves because they yeah. couldn't visualize it. So it was really trying, we're really like focusing a lot more on mindset these days and how we can help people visualize being, you know, the healthier person, whether that be 20 pounds lighter or just being able to have a PR in a squat or a deadlift. Yeah, totally. I, yeah, that's so smart to go about it that way. Because yeah. uh, my, I mean, think about it, like it's, it, you know, the things that we used before were, were, was about, um, you know, that boot camp mentality just didn't work. You yeah. know, I mean, it was, I mean, I guess it was fun for people for a while, but then after a while, it just felt like punishment. And then slowly we start to associate all the, all of a sudden out of the blue, we started to associate, uh, exercise with punishment. And my, yes. you know, my clients would say things to me sometimes to be like, Oh, you're just trying to punish me. They're kidding around or something. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, Oh my God, no, I'm not, I'm really not. It's not punishment. It's not supposed to be. So it got me thinking after a while, like you guys, like what, how am I going to better serve them so they can own this experience of themselves and really not just be doing it. Cause I'm telling them to do it or I'm asked or I'm, or I'm guiding them to do it. Like they, cause they really want to do it. And I think that is so important for each person to know their why of you yeah. know behind it right exactly yeah. yeah i think for so long like the fitness industry has been built on almost the idea of like telling people that they're not good enough and then telling people but but if you buy this supplement or you do this exactly. this workout plan then you will be good enough yes and it really yes. like that so that kind of leans into that sort of like you need to punish yourself because you've been you've been sinning you've been eating cupcakes or whatever you're a bad girl you're a bad boy yeah, exactly. you know yeah and that's the thing it's that scarcity mindset that's what a lot of the marketing has been yeah. behind for so long especially in our industry and that was started to bug me after a while i'm like i don't really want to you know, sell people things from a scarcity mindset. I want, I want to sell them because they want like more, they want to enjoy, they want an abundance of, of stuff, yes. you know, like how can I make your life better? You know, like yes. instead of what you don't have, you know, or, or, you know, r running after what you don't have constantly, as opposed to let's create more of what you want, you know? So, um, exactly. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, this is something interesting that's popped into my vision lately is on, especially on social media. Like I'm seeing people, the hustlers come back in and the marketing and, you know, yeah. after, cause like during the, co during the pandemic it kind of slowed down a bit. It was kind of nice. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm like, now I'm seeing the hustling happen again and the yeah. same like it's kind of marketing strategies. Again. And it's yeah. really, it's really, I'm like, laughing at it now because I'm like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think it's kind of cyclical, right? Everything happens yeah. in ways. And yeah, we're seeing it too. And I definitely think that we're, we're not your typical fitness coaches. Um, I remember we had a client, this was maybe gosh, two, two and a half years ago. And we had an initial call with her and she said, you know, are there going to be weekly weigh-ins and check-ins and, you know, what about my macros and things like that? And that's, that's not what we do for coaching by any means. I do want to reiterate that, you know, there's a time and place certainly for counting calories. And we think it's such an important tool when you're starting your health journey so that you can understand portions and right. carbohydrates versus fats and proteins. Um, but we want to encourage food freedom there's such a disconnect between calories in calories out and the way that food makes you feel. Same thing with exercise and that beast yes. mode, you know, hitting the gym for two hours, getting the heavy lifts in, but then what about quality of form mm -hmm. and mobility? So we're all about, it's almost like reteaching our clients to not be <laughs> and not have that gym hardcore fitness mentality. It's all yeah. about longevity. It's like, that's our slogan, right? Building the momentum. It's one step at a time to have you achieve these goals that are going to sustain for the long haul and life, lifelong mm -hmm. journey that you're on. Cause this doesn't end. You know, we want right. to teach you. We don't want to coach you for the rest of your life. <laughs> we want to give you the tools that yes. you need to implement into your life. Yeah. But the journey goes for, the, for your, your entire life. Exactly. But, it's like, you want to enjoy it, right? <laughs> yeah. But I think it's so it's so interesting that you point out that like like now every now that the, the sort of pandemic is over and it's coming back <laughs> and like hustle mode, where it's almost like 
you know, two years ago or two and a half years ago, I never was. Like everybody was so burnt out, but didn't want to admit it. That uh, exactly. It was like this opportunity came where everybody could kind of rest and, and go in, look inside, and you, know, you can do some mobility work and read some books. And now, now that people are kind of going like realizing they have to be outside with their shirt off again or whatever's going on, <laughs> it's like let's go, let's go, let's go. We got it's hilarious. Again. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm like done with that. You mm -hmm. know. Um, like, listen, try something different. Why are we going back to the same thing? Like, that's so boring, yeah. first of all. And secondly, it doesn't work. You know, we're... Exactly. <laughs> just like, yeah, wow. the burnout is real. And that's, yeah. yeah. And Dan, like, works with a lot of, like, burnt out athletes, mm -hmm. really, because they either had high school careers or major college careers, and then they fell down the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just getting them back to their almost peak potential at their age now, whether that be 30, 40, or 50, it's all unique and dependent on the person. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people who were athletes growing up, athletes like through college, played sports, went really, really hard and then burnt out. And then when their career was over, it's like, I don't want to touch another way. I don't want to be in a gym. Right. And then when they do that for a few years, it's all of a sudden like, okay, well now I need to learn, lose this 15, 20 pounds but I don't want to do that. Say, okay, we can, we can do that. We can start slow. We can take one step at a time, get you moving well and feeling good. And then the rest of it takes care of itself. The aesthetics comes. Exactly. It's a consistency, persistence. And, mm -hmm. and um, that's the only way you're going to be able to be consistent. If you actually are, are, you know, owning it, loving it, doing all those yeah. things. Right. And so that's why the burnout yeah. thing doesn't make any sense to me because you know, all I can think of, what do you guys think about this? Like, what do you think the reason why everybody, especially in our industry, thinks that the burnout, like just go hard is, but, you know, even like the motivational speakers, they're, they're all like, you know, the quick, they do, want to do everything quick. And I thought about this yeah. the other day and I'm just like, why? Why do we want to do everything quick and rob ourselves of the experience? Maybe there's mm -hmm. some more of the experience that you'd like, you need to have, or you want to have. Uh, maybe you need to have that space with whatever you're doing. Why, why does that always have to be quick? You know, what do you guys yeah. think about that? Yeah, I think it's such an interesting uh, you know, observation, but I think a lot, so much of it, just our culture in general is yeah. instant gratification, but also like on a deeper level, I think so many people are just disconnected from their bodies. They don't feel, they don't feel anything. They don't, they don't understand their emotions. They don't have a connection to their body. So it can, it's, they're not going to notice the subtle things. They're not going to notice right. feeling a little bit better, moving a little better. But they do know, like, if you grind yourself into the ground, you feel something. That is a you good point. Pain, yeah. But, but it's something. And then you know you did something. It's, it's very much like, a, I think, at least like a I think you nailed it, Dan. Uh -huh. that, that's it right there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of with with the online coaching that we do. Dan Dan does do in person sessions, so but we obviously do um, coach together online. But that's where we we implemented our you know kind of these like healthy habits. We call them like momentum seven daily habits, and because we we realized quickly exactly what you're saying people were getting very burnt out with simply just eating correctly and working out. But it's right. the 23 hours that you spend outside of the gym that's really going to help you. Are you getting quality sleep? Yeah. You know, are you breathing properly? Breath work is huge. Do you have a mindfulness or meditation practice where you can calm your mind and get away from the hectic, busy life schedule? And we quickly discovered that most people don't have these kind of core yeah. habits that are going to help and progress them along in their health journey is simple as you know taking a 30 minute walk a day where people were like that's going to help and I'm like yeah of course, of course. it's going to help it's, it's it is really true people don't think about those things and i've yeah. noticed that too like the the after especially after this past couple of years the holistic lifestyle coaching a uh, aspect is so much more important. It feels like, yeah. than even just focusing on the fitness or the nutrition, it's like, it really needs to be in there now. You know, you just can't, like you said, at least it, it's not going to work. Like they still yeah. can burn themselves out if they do 90% of the time, all, all the other, you know, running around like a chicken with its head cut off kind of stuff, you know? And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be able to offset that by going into the gym and 
now have, even even the best workout in the world isn't going to offset 23 hours that are working against you right and then I think on top of that like to get back to what we were saying before like if you if you're going to go for that hour and grind yourself into the ground you're just adding stress to all the yeah. other stress and think about how much you get to rest to get come back from that you know like yeah right. yeah exactly. <laughs> And I think people like to Dan's point, like disconnect from their body. The majority of people really don't know how poorly they feel. We talk about this all the time. And I don't mean that to sound mean by any means. I didn't know how badly I felt until I began really digging deep within myself and working on all things internally, whether that be spiritual or physical. But I think we were at least able to kind of plant the seed in people's head. (laughs) And it's really like what we're all trying to do because there's only so much accountability that all of us can do as coaches, but it's really up to the individuals to want to work and better themselves. We can give them all the tools in the world, but they have to implement them themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly so empowering though. Like the best thing in the world is when we get a client that hits that like light bulb moment, uh, whether that be uh, spiritual or like a mindfulness, if they had a really deep meditation or if they hit a PR and it's like, yes, this is what we're here, like helping people for like, I'm just shining my light on you because you're just as capable, if not more capable, where we all are exactly. with this divine, you know, the divine source within us. And that's, that's been like really truly like eye opening and like just so magical that I feel like finally, I feel like I found my purpose. I know that that sounds super cheesy, but it's, it's just, it's, I love helping people in that aspect. I think that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. 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 And I do, I meant to, to, to say this to you at the beginning of when you were saying we have our own podcast called the deep life. And you asked us what our last names are. So a fun little fact about the deep life the deep is so, it it has so many different meanings for us, but we want to dig deep. We want to get into an understanding of, you know, what people's core values are or what their limitations are so we can help them. You know, that's digging deep, but deep is our initials. Dan Elwood, Elisa Palmieri. Oh my God. Okay. That's, (laughs) That's so cool. I love that. And it actually is a great name for a podcast too. That's yeah, amazing. I mean, well. yeah, I did. <laughs> in a deep meditation, like a couple oh. years ago, I was like, when we have a podcast, I didn't know how we were going to use deep, but the, the thought just came to me that deep, I didn't know if it was going to be deep conversation or deep talks, but yeah, the deep life, it just, it came yeah, to me. <laughs> it's perfect. And the combination of you guys is um, really, you know, in your business is, is the energy that you create to help people. And that, that makes sense that it would be like that. That's great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, No coincidences. Yeah. Wow. Definitely not. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's about, we can certainly talk about the relationship aspect. It's it's, let's do it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's interesting. You know, well, I think we just, I think we bring a really important aspect to like people's lives because we, we live a very holistic lifestyle. Obviously everything's interconnected, but we weren't always this way. We've, we've done this journey together. Um, you know, we met in, in high school and, you know, there's certainly been, you know, ups and downs since then. But when we began kind of bettering ourselves, I'd say over a decade ago, about yeah. 10 years ago, everything we did was together. And it wasn't always at the same point. You know, there were aspects of, you know, health, fitness, food that Dan kind of pioneered. And I was kind of scared to take the leap. But when I saw him doing it, it gave me the courage to do it myself and vice versa. Same thing with a lot of like spiritual things. I've been diving deep very much into spirituality. And then I've kind of I think given him the yeah. little nudge to, to <laughs> judge, but it's like a lot of people that we coach do have significant others, whether that be, you know, a husband, a wife, a whatever partnership that you're in. But I think that goes hand in hand because you do need a support system or yeah. someone either cheering you on or helping you. That's not going to shame you or make you feel bad or about wanting to better yourself. So we're able to give that, 
aspect into our coaching. Yeah. <laughs> and having a female dynamic has really helped us too, because there's going to be, there's certain clients that Dan connects with and there's certain clients that I connect yeah. with. And it's just bringing that masculine and feminine for both of us, because we each have that individual to the table with, with coaching. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are similar to like how Roseanne and Jeff work too. You guys know yeah, them. Yeah. yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I, I love that. Yeah. Um, Dan, you want to yeah. say anything about that? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do I want to? Yeah, like, um, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's been an interesting journey, but it is like, it's, I think it's like work, working together, living together, being together. Like we spend a lot of time together. We do a lot of things together. And I think just like, sort of like learning how to work well together has been just like a huge, huge life lesson because it wasn't always there. And I think like we would butt heads a lot, of, you know, especially when we were younger. Mm -hmm. um, we both had, we both had a lot of issues we needed to work through individually. And when we sort of like learned how to give each other space to do that and support each other without it being competitive or like being triggered by each other going through things right. has been huge because I think there's been a lot of things like this, a lot of things like Elise would do that would drive me crazy. And it was like being able to step back and realize that like, okay, I'm mad at her because of something that I did. Wow. Yeah. To be reflective on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And then like at least knowing to be, be patient and like, let me figure it out. <laughs> and uh, so it wasn't another thing we had to fight about. And I think that's been huge. Uh, definitely took mm -hmm. a while, but like I could give advice to other couples is be patient with each other and kind of give each other space to grow. Yeah, I think we, yeah, I think we luckily we have this awareness of who we truly are and what our purpose here is. And I think that right. once we realized that a couple of years ago, our relationship grew exponentially because basically what Dan's talking is, is about both of our shadows, right? The shadow mm -hmm. aspects of our lives and the business really catapulted that I'm, I'm, I'm working on this, but I tend to be very controlling. And I know that that's my ego trying to keep me safe and right. trying, especially like, I don't, I've never run a business before. I, I'm, I'm really learning as I go and my ego doesn't know how to run a business. So it's trying to keep me safe and control the things that I can really control. But I realized Dan is, Dan is so intelligent and he knows so much. He absorbs so much information. He's been a personal trainer for almost 10 years. You know, I've only been a nutrition coach for two. There's obviously, you know, he does a lot of the physical, but he has dedicated his life to researching any and all aspects of well-being and wellness, especially holistic health. And, you know, the Czech Institute has catapulted him. And that was, he was my introduction to learning about Paul Czech. Yeah. So even though, you know, I kept, you know, wanting to control the situation, I really had to relinquish a lot of my control and let him step in and take over. And it, it, in, and that's where like the magic happened because when I relinquished yeah. the control, let him do it, more and more opportunities began coming because yeah. I was releasing that and, I, and it was like the universe saying to both of us, great, you, you're, you're releasing this egotistical small self. We're going to give you the opportunities that's going to show you how a business is going to run and how better you can serve others when we're on the same page and able to learn through what we're teaching and helping others with. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's been, yeah, the shadow work has yeah. been crazy, the inner child work, but it's all, it's only making us better and it's making us better coaches. I feel so much more confident in coaching than I did two, three years ago because I feel like a different person. I'm, I'm happier, I'm more secure, I'm, and I'm going and almost doing these things that I'm teaching clients. So I'm, we're firsthand right. mm -hmm. able to, um, you know, really dive deep in with our clients. And that's really, we call it like the momentum mindset too, you know, diving deep and asking those questions, you know, what's your why, like, or why are you so resistant to this yeah. portion of changing in your life? And I, I, we joke about this a lot. I don't know if you feel the same, but 
we also we kind of become our clients therapists <laughs> on like <laughs> absolutely unlike, yeah you know it's like people open up to you and it's yeah like, I, I I didn't expect that to be a part of the coaching, but it's, it's also rewarding because I'm able to look at people's situations, having the awareness that I have now that, right. okay, your mind has put these limitations on you or these experiences that you've had as a child or an early teen, um, you know, through, you know, school or friendships or community has, has brought these limitations. Let's, let's work through that. And that's yeah. really been so eye-opening. I think yeah. for the both of us, it's it's being able to recognize that we're all humans in this, you know, human experience on earth right now. And we're given these challenges to grow through. Yes. And I'm like, okay, I as I can perceive this person's challenge and help them maybe work and grow through it, it's only making me be able to work through my own stuff and being able to help coach the next person who's going to have a similar or something that's really unique to that. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it turns in, it goes from a projection to a reflection. So everybody's yeah. a reflection, right? Yeah. 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 Place it's, it's, good place it's to beautiful. be. Yeah. And when you have that awareness, it's, it's so rewarding. But if you don't, and it certainly was me years, years ago, I would, I would get very upset and mm -hmm. triggered and I, I couldn't understand it. So I was, I was like stuck in the victim mentality. Yeah. Like, why is this happening to me? Like, why can't everyone just do the meal plans that I'm telling them to do? And then I had to take a step back. Yeah. Right? It was all about me. The universe was giving me these opportunity opportunities to learn and grow through myself. And once I, once I relinquished the victim mentality and I was like, okay, there's this trigger, or this shadow within me. It's coming up because it needs to be released. It's mm -hmm. energy that needs to release out of my body. So yeah. now I'm allowing it to mm -hmm. just passively come yeah. in and, and out. Right. And that's when you realize that like all the obstacles are happening for you, not to you. Yeah. And that they're all an opportunity to grow. And then, then, then you can start growing. And then you're not, you're not stuck in that cycle of the same thing happening over and over and over. Yeah, so that's incredible. That, that, that's been such huge growth for us personally, and at the same time, like as coaches, kind of like at least mentioned before, like we were at a point where we were maybe doing a disservice to people, and that was because we weren't integrating all the other lifestyle things, but we also kind of weren't helping people recognize that. Their, their obstacles are an opportunity and that you know, things are happening for them. Yeah, yeah, everything is, everything is presented to you as a growth opportunity. And if you can visualize it in that aspect, your, your life could be changed. Yeah, it's learning it's, how to it, surender and receive, right? It's, it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the receiving is, is huge. Yeah, not, again, I was trying to control every aspect of my life. And it's just, you know, what's the thing? It, like you make plans and God laughs or something. Yeah. <laughs> is it, and, and that's the hustling striving aspect, right? Is, yeah, is what we, exactly. every, that's kind of our societal like norm and it has been, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where we've all yeah. learned it in a way. That's how we control <laughs> things, right? We make things happen. <laughs> but yeah. I think- And there's certain- point where there's definitely you need to take actionable steps right. there, there's the sure. balance I mean, yeah, yeah exactly the healthy balance I, I love that you put it that way it, 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 it's exactly exactly right you've got to you've got to receive some and then you've also got to give something it's it's yeah. all it's all about the balance I, I love that you said that it's very true I call it inspired action so when you take action it's action that doesn't deplete you right yeah. yes yeah. yes absolutely yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just saying, like, just doing things with intention. Yeah. Not, not just like on that hamster wheel, just just spinning your tires and banging your head against the wall. It's actually like stopping, reflecting, figuring out what what steps you want to take, and then taking them, you know, with intention, so that you're doing it, you're doing it right the first time. Yeah, and I think that that it's it's kind of funny. It goes back to the the relationship. Where Dan and I like we've literally we've been together since high school. Little hiccups here and there, 
but you know, we're, we're not married and neither of us have an inkling to be. And I think it just like, we really like to live our lives on our own terms. And very early on, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't feel a need that I needed to fit into the box of having marriage or a husband as a title, husband and wife as a title to grow together and to learn together. And I think that that was really scary for me because I come from an Italian family, like Italian American, that's all about family and marriage and very much about that. So for me not to be married <laughs> and have that, but it, it was like, it, it really was intentional because I wanted to live my life and show people that I can be really, really happy. And I don't need, to, we don't need to have these labels. Now I am the first person on the dance floor when you want to get married. I will celebrate love all day, every day. I think it's absolutely beautiful when we were just in, you know, the East Coast celebrating, you know, dance cousins mm -hmm. uh, wedding. It's, it's beautiful. I love that people have that um, connection. They want to share it for, for their lifetime. I think it's sacred and I think it's wonderful. But that's, I think, where, again, where, where we step out of the box and we, I just want to be examples for people that you can be your own person. You can do your own thing. You can quit the nine to five job and start your own company, or you don't necessarily need to get married, or you can have multiple partners. I mean, to each their own, whatever it may be. I think that society is taught, has given, done a disservice where you have to be something or have to have a label to be accepted. And I yes. just want to show people like, that's not true. Like labels on yourself, that's only really diminishing who the true authentic person is underneath it all. And yes. that's what I'm trying to exude. I, I, I want to be this authentic version of myself. And I want to show people that it's all right to, to go about your lives doing however you want to do, whether it's acceptable or not it's it's if it's true to you that's your path that's the way to go yeah i agree i agree and i think it takes a higher level of trust to uh be with someone and not do the the whole marriage thing it it, it it's yeah. what it, it what it creates and i you guys are the second couple i've talked to recently that has said this the other i don't know if you guys know mimi and chase but um they uh on the medicine podcast. Um, oh, but okay. I, they did the, they divorced and then got back together, but didn't remarry. So oh. <laughs> they kind of were doing a similar, similar thing to what you guys are doing. They're like, we just like it better like this because now we want to be together. We don't feel like we're obligated to be together, yes. you know? And I think yeah. that is a huge deal because in marriage, especially when you have kids from my experience, um, you do, there's an obligation. It kind of feels like a business relationship after a while. Um, and then you have to rekindle that relationship. And really uh, like for me personally, I had to decide my husband and I, you know, talked about like, do we want to be together or are we together? Because we know we have to raise kids together and we've been together for so long because we got together at an early age too, like um, right um, in uh, college. So I was 20. Uh, let's see, I was 21 and he was 22, I think, or something like that. So it's pretty, pretty young. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, if you're together for so long, you, you start to wonder after a while, like, okay, are we still together? Cause we want to be together or just cause it's comfortable yeah. or we're obligated. Yeah. So yeah. I think that taking the marriage out of the whole thing is, is a great idea because then you, um, I think you just appreciate the relationship more, you know, in some ways yes. and not to say yeah. you can't appreciate it if you're married too, No, but it's like, it's kind of a false, like it's kind of a false, um, contract for the relationship in a way. It's kind of a weird thing. And it, I've thought about that too, you know, yeah. it's yeah. 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 I think it's important that you're not doing it for other people. Yeah. You're not getting to use parents or family or society. Uh, but I feel like, like you just said, just like, taking that time to just ask the question and make sure like, are we still, are we still doing this because we want to do it? Or are we doing it because mm -hmm. we're like stuck in it? And yeah. I think that's, that's so empowering to just know that it is still your choice and that you're doing, you're doing the thing that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's like kind of the same with everything. It's like not being afraid to take those, to ask those questions and to get deep and to ask, like you're, you literally ask, 
why basically talking to yeah. us and saying, why why are, <laughs> we, why are we still together and yeah. it's, it's it's so good to know in the same sense like I are a trainer and you want to lose 20 pounds why right. why do you want to lose that weight is it is it because society says you should be uh, you should weigh less or is it because you need to lose it so that you can love yourself versus you love yourself and want to make choices treating your body like somebody that you love which is very different like losing 20 pounds so you can love yourself is incredibly different than loving yourself so you make good decisions to support your body and in time lose 20 pounds it's just a completely different way of looking at it but i think that's that's living a deep life i think and that's sort of like the, the point we want to keep getting across is like know why you're doing things and make decisions kind of based on your own core values and who you are and i think you, that you always you always serve yourself that way yeah and well it, said it's funny. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's funny because with the relationship aspect like I'm not the same person I was two weeks ago, two yeah. months ago, two years ago. So it's the, it's like an evolution. And I love seeing Dan grow and kind of step into himself, like business owner, like taking ownership, like working through shadow. And same thing with me. I, I hope that we kind mm -hmm. of like, I feel like we're like butterflies, you know? <laughs> See, <laughs> now that you know how to do it, you can do it all, the rest exactly. of your life, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's so funny. I have, um, I don't tell many people this. I have a butterfly tattoo. <laughs> Where? Is like a, Where is oh it? Oh my God. It's so cheesy, <laughs> Allison. Oh my God. Um, it's on my hip. I got it in college. It's like the nice. quintessential like, oh, college mm -hmm. tattoo. Of course. I got one of those too a long time ago and I got oh, taken okay, off. That makes me feel better. <laughs> And, and everybody was at that time was like, what's the symbolism of the butterfly? And it, it literally meant nothing to me. I didn't, I did it. My roommate, um, in college at the time we were freshmen, she was like, I want to get a tattoo. You want to come with me? And I was like, great. Yeah. And she was like, she, she's not an artist, but she's very into art. Like she designed hers. It was like this seashell that had like a beautiful beach landscape in it, like designed herself. I like walked into the tattoo and I was like, just give me a butterfly. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> And it, I, I hid it for so long. You really, you can't even see it in a bathing suit. But the more that I grow and learn, especially stepping into like my true authentic self, yeah, I think every day about the symbolism of this tattoo that I got basically unconsciously. And now I'm just consciously aware of the meaning that it has on my body and how I feel like I'm developing so much from this cocoon caterpillar stage into like this beautiful butterfly. I, I just say that because I was so afraid to share that. And now it's like, this is a part, a part of me that I have that yeah. has just mm -hmm. given me a new aspect on, on life and how everything happens for a reason. And I, I picked this butterfly and here it is on me yeah. as I learn and grow. Like back when you were a caterpillar, your, your soul, how did you get a butterfly tattoo? That's right. Your soul was speaking to you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's so funny how we, we like, this can be a good representation of aspects of ourself that we don't like, or we try to hide, you know, <clears throat> or we're embarrassed about or ashamed about. And it's like, then you look back on it, you're like, actually, I was right on the money with that. One. Yeah. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that my higher self was guiding me then. Yeah. I do now though. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's bananas to look back and see how everything has unfolded in like perfect divine timing in, yeah. in the most beautiful way. I, again, it's like, you, you do have to have a level of awareness of this because anybody who's listening to this, who, who isn't sure of that, they're going to say, you know, what are you talking about? But it's just, every, there are no coincidences. Everything unfolds perfectly when you're ready, whether that be good or bad, it's yes. especially the bad times. Um, right. That's really an opportunity mm -hmm. to look and say like, wow, okay, let me, let me take this head on. And where, where are my life lessons that I can learn and grow through from, from them? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, when they're, you know, sometimes we have to, we have to flex our spiritual muscle, right? We have to have those opportunities. Yeah, yeah, I love that that you said yeah. that. It's, it's, like, 
Yeah, it's like the same as same as like physical training. Like you need to you need to work toward it. You get a little bit, and then you're more comfortable to take the next step. And then, yeah, then the next step, and you, you find yourself building momentum. Yeah, and I find when we began coaching too, I had mentioned this a little bit. Like we didn't really introduce spirituality or like any type of coaching in that aspect at first because we didn't we didn't want to be the weird coaches. But we quickly realized that there is an aspect to spirituality that you do have to at least be mindful of while coaching. And I remember we were working with a client on her breathing. She was an older, older client. And um, Dan does a lot of breath work with our, with our online clients. And she was describing a, I think she was either in a yoga class or some sort of Zoom class maybe a meditation. And she was talking about, she, when I tell you this woman is, lives perpetually in a fight or flight mm-hmm. lifestyle. Like she's right. like the epitome of just someone who like has anxiety constantly. So we're working through it, working with her, with her breath work and, you know, calming her mind. Yeah. And she was explaining to us that she was, uh, it, there was a, a person who was trying to guide her with visualizing breath in her body and reaching all the major organs of your body. You know, I'm sure yeah. you do this with your clients where it's like inhale and like you bring it to your, um, your brain and your lungs and then through your arms and your torso and your legs. And she was getting so frustrated. She's like, I can't even visualize that. Yes, I, that's so funny. I went through the same thing. I, exactly. Okay, yeah. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it, didn't it didn't click when she had told us mm-hmm. that in our session until like a couple days later. And I was like, oh my gosh, Dan, I was like, her third eye is blocked. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, yeah. okay, like that's like, okay, we have to introduce some sort of energy healing the chakras into our coaching. So people like can understand that it's much more than physical. Like yes. there are things deep within us. And that's where I was like, okay, yeah, this is, this is where we can take our coaching to the next level. This is how we can help people visualize as simple as breathing and giving that air into just simple uh, body parts. Yeah. It's like, that's what we mean by everything has to be interconnected, right? Mind, body, spirit. Yeah. Cause you're, you're using your intuition to help that person. And that makes total sense that, that, you know, that's so funny that you bring that story up because that happened to me the first time I realized that, uh, my third eye was blocked like that. I just, yeah. uh, I was like, Oh, I can't imagine anything. Like I can't even do it as hard as I try. I can't, I can't do this. And that's the whole reason I started getting into the opening myself up my creativity and, um, embracing that part um, and, and put the chapter, use your imagination muscle, because yes. I think there's a lot of people out there that are in that position that we just don't realize, you know, and they might not even realize it themselves, but I think no. it's, it's really, um, over time, what might happen to people is they, um, they just suppress their intuition because they're told, you know, it's like, it's woo woo. It's weird. Don't, you know, or, you know, listen to everybody else or whatever it is. They might've had an experience, uh, <laughs> with that where it got suppressed at some point and they just keep doing that. And then they lose the ability to visualize through the third eye. So yeah. I, oh my God. That's. And, and so was she able to do that eventually or, or connect with that at, or she, are she just getting started with you guys? Yeah. Uh, this was a couple months ago. Um, oh, a couple yeah, months ago. Much, okay. Much she is oh, good. Much yeah. So it's yeah, not she, that hard for people to really connect with once they realize it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just awareness, exactly. I think, is the big thing. Yeah. Like, you don't you don't know what you don't know. And I think there's it's so easy to not even not notice or realize that you have repressed things and that you're holding yourself back because you're just not aware and you're not trying to do it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's, it's almost just introducing, like you said, more creativity, even more journal prompts. <laughs> or yes. visualize. Um, yeah, it's just little things like that. And, and we'll give people, you know, exercises just to, you know, visualize like a plant growing, you know, from the yes. roots down. To, it's just little things like that. You don't think of that as uh, your imagination, but, but it is your imagination, your third mm-hmm. eye go hand mm-hmm. in hand. Yeah. And, 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 and once it, Okay. That person, oh, what's that? Sorry, didn't mean to cut I you off. I said, I love this type of stuff. It gets me so excited. I know, me too. It, it's like, 
And I think also once someone opens them up that way, like they have an amazing imagination, like, you know, there's like that just, just unleashes all of that. And, um, whereas before maybe they didn't think they did, you know? And so, um, yeah, I think that it might also have some to something to do with people just really being like you said, at least earlier in the conversation about wanting to control their lives and making sure that everything is a certain way and, and going through life with more ego, um, e- egocentric kind of, uh, you know, approach. So, you know, once you can find the harmony, I would say balance, but also it's really harmonizing the two, you know, mm-hmm. that, um, the ego, you know, appreciating the ego for what it does for you, but then also bringing that uh, deeper aspect of creating your reality and and tapping into that and and getting really uh, comfortable with imagining possibilities, then I think then that's where you, the magic happens, like you guys are talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's what we're really trying to work our coaching towards now because we're envisioning ourselves as coaches, business owners, you know, financially stable, healthy, like kind of harmonized in in all aspects of our lives that we can in turn help our clients visualize that. Because Dan always says, you know, you want to visualize the highest version of yourself. Right. But for someone who can't visualize that whatsoever, that's not going to mean anything to them. So it's really like closing your eyes and picturing yourself 10 pounds lighter than you are. I'm, I'm giving it a simple yeah. example. And it's like, if, if you can do that, you're one step ahead of a lot of people because some people can't even visualize that. And that's what's impeding them from achieving their goals because they've got the mental block. Exactly. Exactly. I love that so much. Yeah. I think um, everything has to be a thought before it can be a thing. That's right. Yeah. Um, if, you have, if you're not able to visualize like the future that you want, then you're going to yeah. find yourself trapped in more of the same. And that's, right. I mentioned before, you, people like, like find ourselves, it's so easy to like get trapped in that like cycle of same and just keep on repeating the same right. lessons over and over and think that the world's out to get you. But you can open yourself up and be able to see, see a future that, you know, gets you excited and then you can bring that into, into fruition. Absolutely. Our thoughts are the tools of our creativity. It's what we, how we create our reality. But then, like you said, if we get limited into thinking certain thoughts are only real, then um, we keep creating more of the same, right? Exactly. Yeah. I get out of that. What's that? You're so right. The thoughts. Oh. Yep. They're all there. <laughs> the thoughts are our teachers, whether they be good, bad. <laughs> well, that's why you got to harness those thoughts. Cause you know, yeah. it's like <laughs> <laughs> take control of those thoughts. Uh, yes. Well, thank you guys so much. I can't believe it's already been an hour. Uh, that is, it's crazy, this is, right? This is uh, how it was met. We could just talk for hours. I it's know. Fun. And I want to see you guys again soon. I want to like go to next time I go to LA, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, send you guys a message and we'll, we'll yes. have to meet up again yeah. soon. Or, or we need to come up to Portland because I've been, yes. I loved it. please do, such please do. Such yeah. You guys life. can, uh, we can, we, there's so many things to do here. We could do hikes. We could go to get some really good food, all kinds of fun yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun having you on. Uh, thank gosh. You. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, you guys are the best. (laughs) If you (laughs) thank you, (laughs) please leave my audience with uh, anything you'd like to uh, leave as far as what you're offering, what you'd like to share as far as websites, links, those kinds of things, and of course your Deep Life podcast. I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. So Deep Life podcast, the Deep Life by Momentum. It's on all major platforms you know spotify apple google play um we release an episode every wednesday so it's a once once a week episode so we do do individual kind of conversations just between dan and i of life experiences and what we're going through and then we have guests on like you yourself and a lot of other great um guests and to follow us on social media we would love it there um instagram facebook 
all at Momentum Strength Wellness. Yeah, same for YouTube. Same for YouTube. And then our website is MomentumStrengthWellness.com. And yeah, we offer online coaching. I mean, in person, if you're in Los Angeles, but online is, you know, our, our go-to. And we typically do um, our coaching through like monthly packages. Packages. So it will be either three months, six months, or a year because we okay. we do yeah. realize that it yeah it takes time. We a month you can get some progress, but yeah. three, six, or a twelve month is really where we we hit the sweet spots with our clients. Absolutely, I do that too. Yeah, yeah. I think you, people have to commit to a certain amount of time for things. Yeah, to happen. It takes, it takes yeah. three months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we want to thank you so much for having us on and giving you're us so the to, to, to talk to your listeners. So thank you, Alice. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. It's like, it's so great to have you and I uh, really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Allison. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Let's see. Oh.